I am. Uh, the coffee's not bad, but I mean, it's just so. Sweet. You have to like sweet coffee to like Tim Hortons. Mm -hmm. You have to love sweet coffee. You got another monster in the back? You're going. Oh, Jesus, it's that kind of day, huh? <sighs> Tell That's... me that can was left over from last night. No. No? It's been that kind of life. But now, running backs get paid nothing because the league realized you could just turn and burn running backs. So none of them make anything. So Bell, I mean, Bell's going to hit the open market next year. The Bills going to have a ton of money. But Le'Veon Bell on the free agent market is going to get 15. I mean, he wants $16 million a year. That's what he wants. He'll never get it. He might get 10. But... I wouldn't want to sign him with all with he's got 1200 carries now 1500 or 300 plus receptions right so at 1500 touches he's phenomenal phenomenal running back he's so good but I don't I don't I don't I don't know if I'd be okay with that that's a thing like Who's the offensive coordinator that was in Pittsburgh and went to Cleveland? I don't know. His name escapes me right now. Anyway, he set that offense up around Lavia. Haley? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Todd Haley. So that type of uh, offensive set, when he when he runs, he you see he gets the ball, he hops, and then he, fix, he figures out where he wants to go. Not every offense is like that. It's very, very unique. Very upright runner. Yeah. Reminds you a lot of Aaron Foster. Foster was a very upright runner, but Foster had like two inches and 60 pounds on him. <laughs> yeah. Bell. Yeah, Bell runs very upright. Uh, so anyway, that offense is very unique. I think because of Haley leaving, unsure of what's going to happen, he probably wants to get more money than that. That's one. Two is my initial reaction when I heard that he turned down a five-year, $70 million deal. Um, and then there's other reports coming out that said not that much was guaranteed in the seven million, which is understandable. You're gonna have Browns 31, Ben's always talking about retiring. You don't know what's going on with your future there. Um, my first reaction was because you know I'm, I get upset. I, I, I said, well, give give Bell 40 touches a game, throw him the ball 10 times, give him 30 carries, run him into the ground. Next year. Five for thirty-five would be like the max he would need because everyone would see him yeah. run down like that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, he's gonna play out. Shannon Sharp said something about him. Uh, undisputed. He was like, "Listen, in mean, sixty-two games, he has just under eight thousand combined yards. That's ridiculous." It is. So he's like, he's just trying to. He's like, the NFL is going like this. Why are you trying to just pay me as a running back when I am? A receiver receiving. I'm everything. Back for, yeah. I, I, why are you just trying to pigeonhole me as a running back? So he agrees with him in that fact of trying to get his money. Um, I just don't. Maybe it's uh, <clears throat> the perspective of I've worked in teaching for ten years and I don't even have a million dollars yet. <laughs> Not even half a million. So. Yeah. Um. I just I just can't believe what he's trying to do, and I don't understand. I don't like okay, you keep holding out, you keep holding out. They can keep tagging you. Yeah, they'll pay up the the what forty four percent increase and all that stuff, and it's still not going to be in there. I mean, it's it's going to be right where his offer was. I mean, it's going to be what it is. You're going to see a twenty percent increase every year. But they don't commit to him long term. If he flames out, which could very well happen at any point, right? Mm -hmm. Not everybody gracefully ages like Ladanian Tomlinson. He aged gracefully. He really did. For a, for a running back that had as many touches as him throughout his career, mm -hmm. he really did age pretty well. He never. Was a pounder though. Mm -mm. No. 
you see a lot of the scat bags, they don't age uh, badly. It's always the guys that pound the rock. So, like Shady, you're saying? Yeah, uh, he won't age. Um, well, I guess that makes it an interesting argument. Would you rather pay Shady 8 or Bell 10? Bell? You'd rather, you'd rather have Bell than Shady? Yes. Okay. So, you're going to pay $2 million for an upgrade and a younger player. And you'd be okay with that because honestly, four years younger, significantly younger, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're the Buffalo Bills, you'd be okay with eating some dead cat money because if you offer Bell five at fifty and thirty-five of it's guaranteed, forty of it's guaranteed, whole okay, doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. How much of it's guaranteed, mm -hmm. whatever. But you might get Bell next off season for ten. You might get it for twelve. You know. With the signing bonus, signing bonus is going to get crazy. Guaranteed money is going to get crazy. He's going to want that deal basically fully guaranteed. But regardless, 10 to 12 is the target zone for Bell next year. And the Bills got a ton of money to spend. So you'd cut Shady to get Bell between 10 to 12. Yes. Okay, what if the deal were a seven year deal? No. Okay. So you've got a limit on that. So I, would, I, would, on I would break ground just as uh, Kirk Cousins did because I think it's probably going to be happening. Soon, four for forty guaranteed next year. Because mm -hmm. then he'll be thirty by the end of the contract. He has his guaranteed money. You can get out of it. Seven years. You got a thirty-two-year-old running back there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thirty-three years. Old. No, I'm not paying you guaranteed money for that. Even though we well, know that's what they did with Shady. They always chop off the last couple of years because no right. one. Ever, yeah, but that's what they did with Shady when they got him. They gave him a contract extension right away and restructured his deal. Isn't that like the bargain here? Don't they have to? Um, don't they have to go back to the table in two in three years? Doesn't it uh, expire in, in three years? It does expire soon, and the players' association is freaking out about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a nasty collective bargaining agreement. We actually might see another lockout because of all the the public disputes. Well, okay. that's your chance. <laughs> <Or> the, <laughs> that's your chance. Sky players, yeah, all day. Yeah, it's you might you might see that because there's a lot of issues on the table. But they want guaranteed, fully guaranteed contracts. Yeah, uh, I mean here's here's my issue with that. With baseball, right? Injuries are less likely to happen to the nature of you no longer being able to play the game. True. Very rarely do you see a guy so injured that he's unable to play the game unless he's a pitcher. Right then, they've got degenerative conditions where mm -hmm. they, their arm just might not be able to handle it anymore. But you don't see guys go down with knees, hips, ankles. You don't see Necks, it. Yeah, yeah you don't see it. So, fully guaranteed contracts in baseball make a little bit more sense because players are less likely to be from the game terminally injured. There, there's not contact, right? So, I understand what the players want. But I don't have a problem with the way the league is structured as far as how they're going to divvy up their money. What they need to do is they need to start putting a cap on all this spending because the salary cap keep going up and it just goes up and up and up. At some point, the NFL is going to no longer make profit, mm -hmm. right? And what's going to happen? Well, now the salary cap's going to have to come down again. The way it's structured, just as long as the league's making money and more and more and more, the salary cap goes up and up and up, right? Yep. But there's going to come a point where the NFL is not making money to the level that they were anymore. And then that salary cap, it's going to, have to come down again. Or plateau. I mean, or plateau. Yeah. And then that just doesn't. But unfortunately, if you plateau at, at your peak, right, and that's where you leave your expected spending, you're set up for disaster. I mean, you'll, it's a failed business model. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a lot of stuff going on with football that's a little questionable. So you take Bell on a deal under five, five or under. I would take a 27-year-old Bell. That's a good point. He's 27. A four-year deal, fully guaranteed, 45 to 50. Now, how can you argue that? You're going to get his, the, the, I mean, the last of his best three years. And then the last year, what are you out? 12 million if you cut him. Yeah. Oh, man. Bell. 
How much of it's the system? I don't think Dable's system is set up for a player like Bell. No. <clears throat> and which is which is a not it's not a knock to Shady, but I'm saying oh, it is, no. Um, no, not at all. He's he's a north south guy, um, Bell. Um, I'd say he's more north south than Shady is, um, and I just think he he understands more. He understands so much of the game after being in that offense with Ben and Haley and, and everything. So I, I mainly just because of age. Is the reason I would take him over McCoy. Right. Now, you want to talk about a 26-year-old Bell, 26-year-old McCoy, then we'd have a serious debate on our hands. Sure, so, sure. So, um, I, I don't know. Like, some, I don't know. It'd be tough. But, you know, 8,000 8, yards in 62 games. I don't hear a lot of positive things about Bell. So, I'm a little concerned that once he gets a contract... And it's guaranteed. He'll throw it in the cruise control. He's just gonna chill. Yeah. I don't know. I think he's. He might go full, full Marcel. Never go full Marcel. Never, never go full Darius. Yeah, you know, I, I'm a little worried that he would just kind of hit cruise control and just be done. Well, I mean, that's that's uh, with anybody. I mean, that's with any any of these players. You could probably say that. You just think more so for Bell than anybody else. Yeah. I yeah, mean, don't you think be. Pittsburgh? would want to shy I think Pittsburgh's offer whatever it is is really your measuring stick for you know nonsense right if they're not guaranteeing a lot of money it might not be because he's a running back it might be because he's a flake you don't know what's going to happen like he's getting paid now he's making money yeah well you gotta think about it he's been in the league four years right year five yeah. right yeah this will be his fifth year yeah so in four years well, he's got. Oh, I'm good. He's got uh, a maximum of 64 games he could have played. He's played in 62, mm -hmm. so it's not an issue of that type of durability. No, no, no. Yeah. You're he, talking he, about he him showing been, up. Yeah, like. And he hasn't really made that much money till this year. This is the first year that he's making like. Oh, when he good uh, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Well, they he wasn't drafted in the first round, so no, it was that's a three not year deal. Yeah, it's four okay. year deal. Or four, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'm just a little concerned that he's going to throw it and just be done. Just walk through the next couple of years. That's a risk that a lot of people would take for a 27-year-old Bell. Give him a fully guaranteed contract. If he flakes out, you're like, oh, boy, this sucks. At the, cor at the running back position? I mean, at the quarterback position, I suppose it's a little bit more... Like you could argue it a little bit more, but at the running back position, a fully guaranteed deal from free agency, yikes! It is it is is definitely a risk. But your the Bills are in that unique situation where they're not spending money at the quarterback position. No, so they can and they won't be. And they yeah, won't be. and they're not spending at the wide receiver position either. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so no kidding. You get spent. Okay, let's get a running back and a receiver for the price of two for the price of one. Let's yeah, go. it's man, the Bills just. They just don't want to spend money at those positions. But again, we've talked about it. Why spend money on uh, why spend money on wide receivers when you're only going to throw the ball 25 times a game? Yeah, it doesn't make sense to have a high-priced wideout. You want stability there. So, I mean, to put a bow on that, uh, Bell. I mean, it's almost like <clears throat> it sounds like the Bills fans are being greedy when you talk about Bell. But I mean, when you have McCoy, but you're sitting there, you're going, all right, let's let's let's, let's take a look at this. McCoy, gonna be 31 next year. Is uh, next year the last year of his deal? Uh, no. Two years. Two years. 32. So you can get out of it without very much penalty. I don't know the exact yeah. numbers. I have to go. No, it's not that bad from a from a guaranteed contract standpoint and signing bonus standpoint. It's really not that bad. Yeah. You can get out for like I think six. Okay. My memory serves me right. We'll fix it on the stat sheet. Yeah. You're gonna have. Um, you're going to have a lot of available funds next year, a la Seattle Seahawks, what they did. They kept rolling over cap money and everything. Now, all that dead money you're paying for this year mm -hmm. is going to be gone. Yep. Um, I don't. I can't think of, off the top of my head, any huge contracts that you're going to have to be dishing out for current players nope. next year because you got a lot of those guys on contract, plus you got a lot of rookie guys with the turnover that happened. Yep. You can realistically go after Bell and give the best 
offer to him. Well, and again, we saw the bill sign guys at the beginning of the free agency period to two-year deals, which tells you that they could swing for the fences mm -hmm. with a little bit more of a true cap number next year yes. because you don't have to worry about filling your roster because you've got these guys on two-year deals. If they work out, you still have them next year. And we thought of it as they're going to draft a guy, a running back in this 2019. Yeah. Because they had to use all their picks to kind of float around this past draft. Right. So it's an interesting thing to take a look at. I never thought, I, I personally never thought Bell would ever be a Buffalo Bill. I, it's a high, it's still high probability it won't be, but the possibility is you there. Have to, you have to look at it. It's, McCoy is like leasing a car, right? So you were uh, driving a crappy car in Kiko Alonso, and somebody offered you a Beamer, and you're just like, Beamer for my Toyota? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. So then you got to ride around on the Beamer for a little bit, and now somebody's coming up and saying, "Okay, tell you what, we'll give you, we'll give you a Lambo, and it's four years newer. It's gonna cost you twice as much, but it's four <laughs> years newer." And you look at it, you really have to think about it, right? You really, it's it's an interesting problem for the Bills to have. 